Oh, John Kerry's Mideast peace talks have gone nowhere. Hey, all Scott Horton here for the Council for the National Interest at councilforthenationalinterest.org. U.S. military and financial support for Israel's permanent occupations of the West Bank and Gaza Strip is immoral, and it threatens national security by helping generate terrorist attacks against our country. And face it, it's bad for Israel, too. Without our unlimited support, they would have much more incentive to reach a lasting peace with their neighbors. It's past time for us to make our government stop making matters worse. Help support CNI at councilforthenationalinterest.org. All right, you guys, welcome back to the show here. I'm Scott Horton. This is my show, The Scott Horton Show. And first up today is Mark Hyden from Conservatives Concerned About the Death Penalty. The website is conservativesconcerned.org. Welcome back to the show, Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me back on. Uh, well, good, good. I'm very happy to have you here, and uh, I really support the work you guys are doing. I think it's really important, and um, especially on law and order issues, does hardly any good for bleeding heart liberals and libertarians to wail and cry about injustice. But when conservatives can attack the right from the right and say, hey, if we want real law and order, we need to you know, roll back these things that are getting out of control, uh, that kind of thing, that can be very powerful, can make such a big difference. So, um, you know, one conservative's concern dot org is worth a hundred liberal or libertarian uh, concerned about the death penalty type sites or movements, I'm afraid to say, but at the same time, you know, I think it's great what you guys are doing for that reason. So um, tell me, uh, what is it about the death penalty that's got you and your compadres here at uh, Conservatives concerned about the death penalty, so concerned that you're willing to put aside the, you know, at least typical, I don't want to assume too much about your prior beliefs or whatever, but the typical conservative support for the death penalty uh, as the ultimate in law and order for some of the absolutely heinous uh, crimes committed by people in this country. Well, I think any time that we're able to work together, whether it's the left and the right or libertarians and conservatives working together, that we should try to. Uh, but this is an issue that can bring us all together, even in this, this age of uh, when bipartisanship is so taboo. Uh, but when you look at the death penalty, the way it's run today, uh, it's, it runs contrary to many of our foundational principles. It risks innocent life. Uh, and we know this because there's been so many wrongful convictions and so many people that have been executed when there was serious doubt regarding uh, the veracity of their verdict. Uh, and then it's more costly than life without parole. It's even led to tax increases. So it's not physically responsible. And Scott, I got to tell you, I don't find anything limited about giving an error prone state the power to kill its citizens. So it's not limited to government. And then we find out that it doesn't deter murder, and it even harms murder victims' family members. And I've, I've been told over and over again that capital punishment is there for the murder victims' family members. But even they are speaking out against it now. All right. And so now for my own personal thing, and I think this represents, uh, you know, it's, it, as you mentioned too, uh, it's, it's really just the question of reliability. We have an adversarial system, uh, although, you know, it's been – there are so many precedents set now about what's admissible and not admissible, even as far as defenses that people are allowed to put on. I think just that kind of basic uh, premise is is in question really now. But even if it's not, even if we live in a kind of Matlockian system where it works the way it's supposed to, you better have Matlock uh, on your side or you might just go to prison. Right. So uh, mistakes are made no matter what. When the system is working perfectly, mistakes still get made, that kind of thing. And, and that's such an important thing for people to understand that, you know, hey, he was convicted doesn't necessarily mean he was guilty. It means he's considered guilty under the law kind of thing. But, um, you know, for me, people mostly still get the benefit of the doubt until I hear the, the details of the case myself. It seems like I think people more and more feel that way, that the, it, the system just can't be trusted, especially, like you say, with a final verdict like this. If somebody's in prison for 40 years, uh, if, if they don't die in there, they can still eventually get out. I read about some people who got out uh, of prison after false convictions today. But if they're dead, they can't. <laughs> That's just, it's, uh, it's just given, uh, it's setting us up for the kind of mistakes that cannot be fixed. Uh, even right. though, Even though we all agree, I think, you know, so many of us anyway agree in this country that some criminals do deserve to die. It's just 
there, it's a separate question of whether we're going to allow our governments to, to do the killing or, or anybody else. Yeah, you're right, Scott. And actually, I was I was talking to the Georgia Tea Party last night in Marietta, Georgia. They they had me come in as a speaker, and a lot of the minds were changed once I I told them how dangerous this program was, how many mistakes are made, and how oftentimes there's actually a, a prosecutorial misconduct leading to wrongful convictions. Uh, so a lot of people changed their minds on the spot, but I did have a couple that were struggling, and they said we 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 really need to have this death penalty for the most heinous of murders. So I had to remind them that the death penalty, the way it's run, it doesn't execute the most heinous of murders. That's just not how it works. But if you do want a system that executes the worst of the worst, you have to have a broader system in place. And if you believe that governments and humans are fallible, you have to be willing to accept a certain amount of collateral damage. So I'd ask them how many innocent lives are they willing to execute to get the real bad guys. And, of course, they couldn't give me an answer on that. Right. Well, and, you know, it's frustrating, too, when some of these stories, there's just no question. The guy's caught completely red-handed. He admits it. Uh, everybody knows he did it. There's a 100 witnesses, whatever, whatever. Some of these really are beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yet, that's not a separate standard. It's simply beyond a reasonable doubt, and that's in the minds of 12 random you-don't-know-whos and under the impression that they're left with under the process, the way it's set up. So that is is a far cry from you know we all agree beyond a shadow of a doubt kind of situation yeah, that's uh, that's correct. And actually, if you want to look and see who actually receives a death penalty, uh, it's based on location. It's based on what county you're in, because most counties don't use the death penalty. They can't even afford to use it. Mm. Uh, and then you have to look at whether or not the uh, what kind of a defense attorney that the uh, accused receives, because oftentimes they get really bad attorneys. Some of them in the past uh, weren't even criminal defense attorneys. I can think of one example where he was an ins an insurance attorney. Uh, so oftentimes. It's poor representation that leads to this. But uh, one of the uh, uh, things that you can point at, if you look at the race of the victim, that's often a good indicator of whether or not they're going to seek the death penalty or not. Oh, yeah, and probably especially when it's cross-referenced with the race of the perpetrator, as in black-on-white murders get the death penalty more than any other one. Certainly. Right. All right, so now tell us quickly, what are you doing about it, Mark? You know, I'm traveling the United States. I'm going to conservative groups. I'm going to libertarian groups, uh, tea parties, colleges, uh, and all sorts of conferences. And I'm just trying to educate people. Whether or not you support the death penalty in theory or biblically, our government doesn't run the program well or up to theoretical or up to biblical standards. And if we really are skeptical about government power, then we have to be willing to look at this program because – I don't believe there's a bigger government power than one that can take your life away. Uh, so this is a, a this is a program we need to revisit. Uh, we're changing hearts and minds uh, one at a time, and uh, I'm very positive in in my outlook. I know that uh, Republican support for capital punishment actually had a five point swing in a single year, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to think that we were part of that. But that's the largest. Uh, swing that was larger than the past 19 years combined. So wow. minds, minds are starting to change, and support for capital punishment is near a 40-year low. And I think capital punishment is slowly becoming obsolete here in the United States as more people learn about how dangerous and wasteful this program is. Awesome. And now you're doing uh, CPAC here real quick, uh, real soon. Um, I know that. And are you trying to get these other groups to come out as groups in favor of your position here? Well, I'd be happy to see more groups come out against the death penalty, and we've formed a strategic partnership with the Young Americans for Liberty and Jeff Frazee, their uh, leaders against mm -hmm. capital punishment. He's one of our supporters. Uh, the Liberty Coalition, also, uh, we formed a partnership for, with them and their leaders, Michael Osterlink, who's uh, also a supporter of ours and came out against the death penalty. So I'd be happy to uh, work with many other organizations that are already out in criminal justice reform and uh, hopefully get them to stand up and talk about a broken government program that we need to get rid of. You should talk with Grover Norquist and, uh, and bring him on as a deficit hawk on this, on a fi as, a, uh, as a fiscal hawk. And, and how just the death, the death penalty racket and how much money is wasted and all the extra appeals and all the extra process and all that. I bet you that might uh, be a good avenue to try to go down. 
Oh, you bet. And, uh, you know, I've met with him before and talked with uh, some of his supporters, and there's no shortage of examples of the death penalty causing horrible budget decisions, leading to tax increases, and even leading municipalities to mortgage all of their ambulances in order to try to execute someone. So this is a conversation we can have. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It's heroic work. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. I appreciate it, Mark. Thanks for having me on. All right, y'all, that's Mark Hyden. He's at conservativesconcerned.org. That's conservatives concerned about the death penalty. Hey, Al Scott Horton here to tell you about this great new book by Michael Swanson, The War State. In The War State, Swanson examines how Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy both expanded and fought to limit the rise of the new national security state after World War II. If this nation is ever to live up to its creed of liberty and prosperity for everyone, we are going to have to abolish the empire. Know your enemy. Get The War State by Michael Swanson. It's available at your local bookstore or at Amazon.com in Kindle or in paperback. Just click the book in the right margin at ScottHorton.org or TheWarState.com. Hey, I'm Scott Horton here for The Future of Freedom, the monthly journal of the Future Freedom Foundation at FFF.org slash subscribe. Since 1989, FFF has been pushing an uncompromising moral and economic case for peace, individual liberty, and free markets. Sign up now for The Future Freedom, featuring founder and president Jacob Horenberger, as well as Sheldon Richmond, James Bovard, Anthony Gregory, Wendy McElroy, and many more. It's just $25 a year for the print edition, 15 per year to read it online. That's FFF.org slash subscribe. And tell them Scott sent you.